Okay, we're here. We're going to do the uh, June 2010 short response for the geometry regions. Uh, here's 29. Uh, Tim's going to paint this uh, wooden sphere, basically one on the surface area. This is a formula off your, re off your reference table. It's given to you on the exam. All you got to do is plug in. What's R? It's the R, R is the radius. The diameter is 12, so the radius is 6. Simple as that. Use your calculator, plug in. Uh, the accompanying diagram, the keyword here is the mid segment. That line right there is called the mid segment. It is parallel to the bottom line and worth half as much. So the fact that they told you DE was 7 automatically means AC is 14, and, uh, and then you can just find the perimeter. If you're curious why this is worth half of that, it's because there's similar triangles. You see, here's a, here's a triangle, and then here's a big one. And because it's a mid-segment, it connects two midpoints, and it's worth half as much as the big one. So, um, so yeah, so the perimeter is 37 for this one. Um, uh, here's just a basic word problem, to be honest with you. Right triangle, you know, it's uh, D is 90, and F is 12 less than twice E, so it's 12 less than twice E, and I said E was X, and... You know, if this is 90, that means these two got to add up to be 90. Just solve it out. And the E is 34. All right, 32. Here we go. So, um, you know, the trick for this one is the fact that it tells you that the, the they want you to reflect this triangle over the line X equals 2. Now, remember, X equals are lines that go up and down. Also, look at where this thing is. Look at where this thing actually is. It's touching the y-axis. So be careful that when you reflect it over, you get the coordinates right. Uh, I, when I originally did it, I actually had to go back and check my coordinates very carefully. Uh, X, Y, and Z are, you know, these guys right here. So reflect this over, and you're good to go. Uh, 33. So these two lines are parallel and they're 10 inches apart, which means directly in the middle is 5 inches. So guess the locus of points that are equidistant from A, B, and C, R, D. That's the a line that goes directly through the middle of them. So this line is basically at 5. Um, and then 7 units, 7 inches from point R, that's going to be a circle around point R with a radius of 7. This line was five away from both of these, and the radius of this circle here is seven, so it's going to cross over in two places. Um, base of a uh, pyramid is a rectangle. I basically just drew it in, to be honest with you. Uh, the width is six, and the length is eight. We've got to find the height. This is a formula off your reference sheet. Remember that this big B is the area of the base. Six times eight is 48. All you got to do is just plug in, solve away, H is 16, A, A, sorry, H is 18. 35, you got to do a proof. First thing you want to do is just draw a picture. Mine looks like a rectangle. It's not, though. It's just a quadrilateral, four-sided shape. And um, AB is congruent to CD, and AD is congruent to BC. That's the given. I said that BD, this, this diagonal right here is reflexive. And then look at, check this out. We got two triangles, and they're congruent by side, side, side. And then the two angles you're looking for are actually congruent by something called CPCTC. That's congruent parts of congruent triangles, or congruent. This next one, 36, I think is pretty much the hardest one on this whole, on this whole short answer test. Okay, so they give you a point, they give you a line, and you've got to find the equation of a line perpendicular to this one and going through this point. So the first thing you want to do is take this line in the way that it's given and reorganize it. Get it in y equals mx plus b form so you can find the slope. That's this thing right here. Okay. The, the slope of a line perpendicular to it has a negative reciprocal slope. So its slope is going to be two-thirds, the negative flip of this one. Okay, so then here's the general equation of a line. I subbed in this slope. Now I've got to find b. This x and y are going to be filled in by that coordinate right there. So we get 5 equals 2 thirds of 6 plus b. You know, 2 thirds of 6 is 4, and 4 plus 1 is 5. So b is 1. And then all you do is take this slope, because this, this means it's perpendicular to the original, and plug it in, and boom, there's your line. Uh, write an equation of a circle whose diameter is... Uh, 
you know, has these two points. So I just basically plotted them down, and then I literally counted, okay, to find the midpoint. It was down 6 and over 8 to get from A to B, which means the midpoint had to be down 3 and over 4. And then I was looking at it, and I'm like, wow, there's a right triangle right there, a famous one, 3, 4, which means the radius has to be 5. I then took the circle formula, I filled in, I knew my center was at 0, negative 1, my radius was 5, and I just filled right into the circle formula. Finally, question number 38, we got, some, we got a little rhombus going on over here, a little rhombus action. So, um, so in a rhombus, rhombuses are parallelograms, so the diagonals bisect each other, so this is congruent to this, which means 3z is equal to 4z minus 8. You know, solve out, you get z is 8. Okay. Now, a rhombus has congruent sides, which means that 3x plus 30 equals 8x minus 5. Solve it out, x is equal to 7. Here's the tricky part. Let's zoom in a little bit so you can see this. Okay, you see this little triangle here? Okay. Rhombus's diagonals are perpendicular to each other, which means that's a right angle, which means these two angles right here in this triangle have to add up to be 90 degrees. So I set them equal to 90, I solve it, I get y equals 6, and then all I do is plug back in. You know, SR, all I did was plug in literally to SR, plugged in a little 7 right there, because we found out that x was 7. Uh, RT, RT, now remember a rhombus is a parallelogram. Parallelograms have diagonals that bisect each other. So RT is worth just two of these legs line segments. So two times five times eight plus five equals 90. And then TAS, all I did was just plug in these six. And there you go. That's how much TAS is. And that's all the short response questions for the June 2010 Geometry Regents.